Let's take a look at some moments of inertia. So we're looking at um, the HP 11 notes, and what we're going to be talking about is moment of inertia here, um, which is a little bit strange to think about, uh, but in terms of relating it to what we've already done this year, nothing too crazy is going to happen. Um, imagine a scenario here, and let's just kind of go to the side to do this. Imagine a scenario where I said, like, you have a block, and it has a mass of 2 kilograms and you put a, another block on top of it that had a mass of one kilogram. And I asked you to figure out, hey, what is the total mass of the block, of the blocks together? You would pretty much just say, well, the total mass is the two kilograms plus the one kilogram. And two plus one equals three, three kilograms. The same idea is going to apply with what we're going to be doing next of moments of inertia. When we talked about mass earlier on in the year, what we were talking about is not just the amount of stuff that is contained within an object, but we were also saying, look, a mass is an object's ability to resist a change in its motion, to resist an acceleration. And we call that an inertia. Um, you know, if you've been listening to Bill Nye, inertia is a property of matter. And it's, it's that property that resists accelerating the speed up or resisting the slowing down of an object. And the more mass you have, the more of that resistance to the change in motion you have. Well, what we're going to be looking at here with a moment of inertia is how do objects resist being rotated based on not only their mass, but based off of their shape. And depending on the shape of the object, that ability to rotate can be a lot easier or a lot harder. For instance, if you are standing, like I am now, and you put your arms out, and you just kind of rotate at the hips with your arms out, you can do that. It's not too crazy. But if you start pulling your arms in, you can rotate a lot easier with your arms in like this. And then if you put your arms out, it's harder to rotate. If you do the same thing in an office chair, you find a spinny chair in your house, you put it on a nice hardwood floor, um, if you spin around in it with your arms out and then tuck your arms in, you'll actually start spinning faster. Um, and that deals with something we'll talk about a little bit later with momentum, but it makes it easier to rotate whenever your arms are tucked in. And that's because your arms are made of some stuff. There's mass in there. There's muscle and tissue and um, bones. And as you bring them closer, you're changing your mass distribution. And it's this changed mass distribution that allows you to rotate easier. That is your moment of inertia. It's a mass distribution there. So when we think about moments of inertia, um, many objects have different moments of inertia. And there are ways to calculate these. Um, typically, though, you have to do a little bit of calculus to find them, and we're not doing that. Uh, what we can do is if we go back to our best friend, our sheet that had all of these equations on it that we talked about earlier on, if we go to the very bottom of it, there's actually a moment of inertia chart for us. Okay, And in this moment of inertia chart, um, just based off of what shaped object you have, we know moments of inertia is for them. Um, if you have a thin hoop, so that is like, uh, a hoop like a hula hoop where the mass only exists at the edge and there's nothing in between then the moment of inertia is just the mass of that hoop multiplied by the radius squared and if you look at these pictures that's if you're rotating about the center of the axis so if that hoop is like just magically rotating around some middle point that would be the moment of inertia for it this thin hoop this moment of inertia of mr squared, it also applies for a point mass. And what we mean by a point mass is if you imagine like one bit of mass orbiting something, it would have the same moment of inertia. We actually think of the planets as point masses, because we can pretend that all the mass on the planet of the Earth is located in the center of it, and that mass is orbiting the sun. So we can think of planets as point masses in that regards. But we've got all sorts of other shapes here. 
Um, if you have a thin hoop that has some thickness to it, like a belt, um, not only would we have the mr squared, which has now become a 1 half mr squared, but we get this extra 1 12th term. Uh, things that we'll more often use though, instead of like a thin hoop with a belt, is we'll be using cylinders a lot, which are these 1 half mr squareds. Those are very nice for us. Um, cylinders are solid objects, like an entire cheese wheel. Like if you ate an entire cheese wheel, that's a cylinder, okay? Um, we're not gonna be talking about hollow cylinders too often, but they can exist as well. Um, other shapes we really do like in the world of physics are uniform solid spheres. Um, those are one or two thirds mr squared. Um, a hollow sphere also has uh, a moment of inertia, um, but we're gonna try to stay away from those a little bit. Um, actually, what is a hollow sphere's moment of inertia, just so we have it? Hollow sphere moment of inertia. A hollow sphere's moment of inertia is, just going to Wikipedia, and it's two thirds mr squared. So if the sphere was hollow, it would be two thirds mr squared. And notice how all of these terms have an mr squared. It's just a matter of what coefficient in front. Is it two thirds, is it two fifths for a uniform rod uh, with the axis in the center, it's one twelfth in front. If we switch that axis uh, over to the edge, if we slide it over, it becomes one third. So it just depends what you're rotating around and how your mass is distributed around that rotation axis. Uh, that will give us some moment of inertia. And we, for the most part, just look these up on a table, okay? Now, if we go into our moments of inertia here, um, if we have two objects, such as a solid sphere and some disc, some cylinder, uh, those two different objects have two different moments of inertia. If we stuck those objects together, what would that new moment of inertia be? And I don't want to do any calculus to figure that out, so how would we go about doing it? Well, just like before, when we had a two kilogram mass and we just set a one kilogram mass on top, the total mass was just the total masses added together. Moment of inertia can be thought of as a rotational mass more or less. And this means that to find the total moment of inertia, all you need to do is add up each of the pieces. Moment of inertia of the first one plus the moment of inertia of the second one plus however more of these things you've got that you stuck together. The only thing you need to make sure of is that all of them are having their rotational axis through a point that you know what the moments are. So for this, our sphere is rotating through the center and our disc is rotating through the center. When we look at our chart, we note that for our cylinder, that is indeed rotating through the center and through our uniform sphere, we're rotating through the center as well. So we're gonna have a 1 half mr squared and a 2 fifths mr squared added together. So to do this, um, we look at what we have here. Uh, we know that our moment of our sphere is going to be 2 fifths mr squared. And we know the moment of inertia for our cylinder is going to be 1 half mr squared. The only thing we need to do now is figure out what are the masses and the radii of our problem. And what we're actually given in the problem is the sphere just has mass m and radius r the disc has a mass twice that of the sphere and a radius three times that of the sphere. So to find the total moment of inertia, we just need to add these two together. For our sphere, we're just gonna have the 2 fifths mr squared. When we add it to the cylinder, we're gonna have 1 half, and our mass here is actually twice the mass of the sphere, because we're 2m, and then our radius is 3r. And we need to make sure that we don't forget to square that quantity. What this will give us here is it's gonna give us a 2 fifths mr squared, that's from the sphere, plus, and if we go over here and do a little bit of math, uh, we'll see a little bit of things here. We'll see the 1 half and the 2 are gonna divide out. And we need to make sure that we square this three and we're gonna get a nine. So that's actually gonna be nine mr squared on this side. 
if we just try to add these together, um, we could you know, put it in a bunch of different ways that our math teachers might be mad at. But if we wanted to put it in something where everything was in one fraction, um, maybe I'd recognize that with a common denominator of five, nine times five is 45. So I could say two fifths mr squared plus 45 fifths, which looks weird, but it is just the number nine mr squared is gonna equal 47 fifths mr squared. And that is the total moment of inertia. So you're just adding things together. Um, you're just checking a chart, you're checking a table, and you're just saying, give me all the values, I'm just gonna add them together, and we're good here, okay? So it's a very straightforward thing to add together moments of inertia, um, but that moment of inertia quantity is just how difficult is it to rotate something? How much do things want to oppose being rotated? And if you're a gymnast out there, um, you know, whenever you do all your tucks and all your different spins and stuff, like you've experienced this, you've done this by tucking your arms in. If you've ever done a front flip on a trampoline, you try to tuck really tight to get that flip to happen quickly. That's what's going on here. You're just manipulating your moment of inertia. So check that out, uh, pretty straightforward thing. Hope you enjoyed it. And check out the next video for some more information on how we can use uh, some of these moments of inertia with our quantities of torque. Take it easy.